Okay, so we're gonna go biking to the library. I have my handy dandy chain belt and uh, we're gonna bike because we need the exercise. We've been working for a few hours. It's time to get up and do some moving. <laughs> Okay, so I actually have a very firm belief that uh, the internet and uh, social media makes us fat because we get our all of our highs while sitting on our butts. Um, so Paige is going in to get batteries for her Spanish learning audiobook, and then we're going to walk over and see if we can find some books for the kids to read. I also think that books can be damaging if you spend too much time reading. I really like audiobooks because of that, because you can listen to them and be learning while you're working on something that is an actual product that makes your body move. So I think it's still Soma. It's still a drug that we use to pacify ourselves, but we're gonna go down and look at some books. The girls don't spend a lot of downtime reading. They like to read a lot, but they spend most of their time up moving and playing. And I'm the one who's mostly addicted. I'm so addicted to social media, so addicted to YouTube. And I'm going to cut my data plan down to nothing, for one thing, because of the expense, because um, the transition between one type of video and another type of video always makes the channel nosedive for a little while, so budget-wise, I need to do it. But also, it's just because I want to. I want to not have that. Uh, entertainment over my shoulder when I could be doing other things that are so much more fun than just being on social media. So I hope that my videos are important to you, that if you're watching them, they're important to you. I have people that I watch and I, wa I will always watch them because they're important to me and what they're giving me is so valuable. So I still think that social media has value, but I don't want to be on it for maybe more than 45 minutes, maybe an hour a day. So that's my own personal thing. Hey guys, I wanted to come on and give you my thoughts on libraries and the number of hours that we put into the books that we read that we use as entertainment and, and education in our homes. On a personal note, I am a great reader. I love, love to read. But I find sometimes that when I go to the library, I make do and I settle for the books that are there rather than reading the books I really want to read because one, I don't want to spend the money on it. Or two, I don't want to go to the uh, bother of asking for the interlibrary loan. So for me personally, I say, if there's a book I really want to read, I need to read that book and not settle for other entertaining books that, you know, aren't really going to change and enhance my life. Now, on a more serious topic, I want to talk about our children and our lack of supervision on their entertainment, specifically books. Whether you do video games, whether you let the kids watch unsupervised cable, that's for another, that's for a whole nother ball field. Um, we don't choose to have television in our home or, and our children do not have devices of any kind because I do not believe that my children should be in, ingesting information without me having gone through it first. Because in our day and age, there's so much information out there, even in book format, that I do not believe will enhance or improve my children's lives or improve their character and thus I want to have very strict control over the little funnel, the, the little hole that things are allowed to come through into my home. I am there at that funnel and I am making sure that nothing comes in that does not, that they can't walk away from as a better person. I don't want them to walk away from things with moral ambiguity in their mind about well, what did this mean and should I have watched that and should I have read that and I don't understand. I want to be there at that guard post to help them understand the things that they're seeing if they find something that is inappropriate. I want to know that they found it and I want to be able to have a conversation with them about it. And as they age, I do change the parameters of what I allow them to read. Um, they can read slightly more mature content, but I still want it to be presented in a way that allows them to build their character with it 
rather than just being entertained or even being damaged by the information they're being given. When I was a child, I was homeschooled and my mom was incredibly careful about what we read. She went to secondhand stores, she went to library sales, she went to garage sales, and she found most of our reading there. When it came to being in the library, she would personally check every single book that we checked out to make sure that it was in accordance with the values of our family. Now, that being said, I don't believe in censorship. I believe that if it, it's not the role of the government to decide what you can and cannot partake of. It is a parent's responsibility to censor what comes into their home. And the reason I believe that is because art for the sake of art doesn't mean that all art is something you want to ingest. Music for the sake of music doesn't mean that you want to ingest all music. Words for the sake of being literate doesn't mean you want to say all words. I think we want to be discriminant, discriminating about what we ingest and what we put out there. And if what your child ends up finding in a library is something that um, is poisonous to him or her, then you as a parent are the one responsible for the fact that he, they were exposed to that because you didn't check. So I'm not saying that everybody out there needs to pick like a gospel-centered theme, but what I am saying is that whatever it is that is in your value system Take responsibility for it, and instead of allowing your kids to free range through their information and through their entertainment, take charge of it because it does make a difference. It makes a huge difference in what happens to your children later on because of what is put into their brains when they're very small. I know. It's less than a mile. Three quarters. It's less than three quarters of a mile. Well, it's two quarters. We are walking to the bike store because Kaya's bike does not have brakes, Paige's bike does not have gears, and I don't have a bike period. So I think total it'll probably be three miles there and three miles back. We're having a lovely time. The weather's beautiful. We're having a lovely time. Kaya's being We're having a lovely time. So I'm tempted, where it rains so much here, to have sunny days be PE type days where we go out and spend all our time outside, and rainy days are the days where we sit and do school. And have friends inside. And have friends inside and play right, Scrabble. Right, um, that's kind of where I'm leaning right now because I see that when we do regular, when we do every day the same, when even though the weather's different, it's not... Um, I don't think it's the best way to do it. I think it's better just to kind of play it by ear and get as, much, get as much sunshine as we can. Isn't this beautiful? This is the park. Well, part, part of the bike trail. 